video we're going to have a look at how to name the alkanes and the alkanes are a class of compounds organic compounds specifically that contain only alkyl functional groups and what do I mean by that well I mean they only contain carbon atoms hydrogen atoms and single bonds and for any compounds that contain only those things the suffix or the end of the name is always going to end with a and for reference, an uh, important part of naming organic compounds is to know how many carbons are in our main chain. So let's bring up that little list, which gives me the number of carbons and the stem, the kind of central part of my name uh, that relates to that number. Let's take a look at some examples. So here's our first example. Uh, it's only carbons, hydrogens and single bonds, so it's definitely an alkane. It's got one, two carbons in that main carbon chain. So I need to have a look at, yeah, two carbons. That means the stem name is going to be ETH. So if I want to write a name for this, it's going to begin with ETH. And because it's an alkane, it's going to end with A. It's a nice, easy one. Let's try uh, a second one. Okay, in this case, let's count the carbons in my main carbon chain again. I've got one, two, three, four. In this case, four means the stem name is going to be Butte. So let's write down Butte, and it's an alkane, it's going to end with A. Now let's add a little bit of uh, complexity. Here's another one. Well, again, same process, it's definitely an alkane. What's the longest carbon chain I can find? Well, let's go one, two, three. I could also count one, two, three, but actually, as they're both three, let's stick with the nice straight example. Stick with those three as our main carbon chain. So it's three carbons, so the stem of my name is going to be prop. We know it's an alkane, so it's going to end with ane. And in this case, I've got a substituent group or something sticking off uh, in place of one of the hydrogens on that chain. And in that substituent group, I've got one carbon sticking off the side. So I'm looking for a little additional stem name that's going to become at the beginning of my name. It's going to contain meath. And what we do in this case is we are going to put methyl propane. Now to give a bit more information, if I number my main chain of carbons, one, two, three, technically, this is two methyl propane. However, if that carbon sticking off the side was on the first or the third carbon, it would actually be one long chain with four carbons. So that number is actually, in this case, unnecessary to write. Let's take that a step further. Here we go, classic bit of a trick question. Uh, same thing as an alkane, definitely. So let's find my longest carbon chain here. Now the uh, bear trap to fall into here would be to say one, two, three, four. However, actually, it doesn't have to be in a straight line in my structural formula. So there's three carbons. If I take the little branch and go four, five, that is actually the longest chain of carbons in my molecule, and five, relates to pent, so I know that the stem part of my name is going to be pent, and then ane, because it's an alkane, and then we need to consider that substituent group, that thing sticking off the side of my chain, which again has one carbon, so it's going to be a methyl substituent group, and the additional detail here, because that could be on a number of different carbons, let's just label our carbons, one, two, three, four, five, it's sticking off the third carbon there. It could also stick off the second carbon. So let's call it with a bit of extra detail, 3-methyl pentane. And final one, slightly more difficult again. Let's find our longest carbon chain. Well, I think in this case, the straight line is my longest chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I know again, the stem name is going to be pent, and it's ane because it's an alkane. Now in this case, we've got two substituent groups. And there's one other little pitfall that you might be tempted to fall into here. If I number my carbons from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, that would put the methyl groups on carbon number three and four. However, we always want to name our compounds so that any groups sticking off the side or functional groups are as close to the first carbon as possible, meaning the numbers I include in my name Will be as low as possible. So to do that, I'm actually going to undo those and I'm going to label my carbon chain from right to left and say one, two, three, four.
four, five. That now gives me my methyl groups on the second and third carbon. So I'm going to write the numbers where they appear, two, three, a little comma in between, and then a dash. And in this case, because I've got two methyl groups, I need to put di before I write methyl, just to indicate that there are two methyl groups. And where are they? They are on carbons number two and three. And that will pretty much do it for this video. Hopefully this was of some help.